Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Lady Gang. I'm Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Nye. Hello. hello. Apologies, <laughs> guys, for my frizzy hair today. <laughs> I was going to say. It is, it is something. I had been. Okay, so I went lighter recently Ooh, because I caught some footage of myself tr- going back to natural. You know what I mean? Mm. I was really making my way through my natural era. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was 10 years too late because I'm too gray now. <laughs> so that was fun. But I thought like I was, your grays, I feel like look blonde. They do. Not when it grows out a lot. Okay. Like it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> and the, my natural hair color is not as beautiful as it once was. Uh-huh. It now is... Um, it's a little soap dishy. It's city rat, city mm. rat, mm-hmm. and it's bad. It's just mm. bad. So I went and I was like, you know what? I need to go blonder. And I had forgotten what my hair had done with color in it. Mm-hmm. Cause in my twenties, I remember having kind of a frizzy, like textured hair thing going on where yeah. I, I couldn't really go to bed with my hair wet or I'd wake up looking crazy. I thought my hormones had changed and I just was like, Oh, now I wake up with like really like kind of silky <laughs> fine hair. And now <laughs> it was just color damaged mm-hmm. all those years. So you went to bed with wet hair and that's I what went to bed like. with wet hair and I look like Orly. <laughs> It is a bit poofy. It's so poofy. And I don't, I put, there's no product in this. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what my hair would look like. Do you want me to put like a heatless curl in you during this episode and we can see what happens by the end of it? I don't think there's any saving it. No, it's it's, once it's like gotten its texture from the wash, you're kind of f***ed. I don't even know what I'm going to do. Maybe add in some like, some like, like some waves. I don't know. I I want to thank you actually, because uh, you know, a few weeks ago, talking about hair color, a few weeks ago we were recording and you looked at me and you were kind of like, I don't know about your hair color. (laughs) Um, and I was like, I was like, Oh, I didn't realize that I had become so dishy and I didn't realize how long, how, see, here's the thing. You need a, you need a Becca in your life. You need a truth teller Mm. because no one would tell me or no one cared enough to tell me or noticed or wasn't like noticed in my beauty, beauty (laughs) notice was so thoughtful. (laughs) And so I went and got like my hair reblonded and like the the amount of people that are like, whoa, it's so much better. You look so much better. You're so hot again. And like, I was like, wow, I guess I was really ugly. But thank you, Becca, for being a truth teller. Well, can I give you some more truth? <laughs> you don't like the front part. The front, listen. I know it's Let hot. Me see it. You Let took me see the it. note and your hair looks beautiful. Yeah. I do think the front is too, um, it's it needs more dimension. Well, yeah. it's giving like 90s I know. But it's a piece. good color. Yeah. I think you could go through with some low oh, lights the problem at the root. It's going to look bad when it grows out. Yeah, it's a little, she didn't do the root, like the root shadow yeah. on the bang because my bang is so short. It's the whole problem is bang. Yeah. The bang. Bang is the problem. Bang is always but the, the problem. color is good. There's not enough you reach shadow it and then you just have a dark bit. So I just need it to grow two more inches and then I'm going to root shadow it. Yeah. Great. It'll but it looks fine. great. Thank you for taking the note. Thank you. You're <laughs> I will be taking notes as well because I know I literally am sitting here pot, kettle, black, all the things. Beautiful. Well, I will say after the last time that we recorded in person, I did tell Jared, I was like, I don't know if Becca's going gray in the front or if she highlighted her hair. <gasps> it, was, it was white. God, the things we say about each other in our backs is crazy. It's she it said it to my face. Back. I know, but I was like, whatever. But I told him that because I'm like, the grays look so good no, that you can't tell if gray. it's like a blonde or, or not. I'm almost to the point that my grandmother was like in her 40s where she was all white and then she just ended up having to tint it like a blonde. And she was a platinum blonde because she was so white. And I think that's I where my I love that train though. is heading. I just think it ages me a lot when I have really, really light hair. So yeah. guess what, guys? It's over for me. I used, I used to be sort of kind of attractive and it's f-ing over now. Um, do we have time to jump into a good week, bad week? I think it would be nice. Okay, I'll make it quick. I'll make it snappy. Okay, great. So um, it's, snappy. it's time for... Good week. Yes, it is. Bad week. Oh, no. Um, my bad week is last night. I knew I had to wake up for a flight at 5 a.m. Mm, and mm, I was mm, cuddling mm. up into bed and Zach has something on the TV and I start getting hooked and I'm like, well, what is this? It's the TMZ. I know that you know what this is. What? The 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 TMZ, which by the way, they're trying to become Dateline now. TMZ is? Yes. Harvey Ke- Keitel mm-hmm. does this thing where he like, it's almost like a Dateline. Name. Isn't it? Oh, no. Harvey... <laughs> 
Not Weinstein. No, the T- Harvey. Was, yeah, Harvey. Harvey. I don't know. I, I didn't know he had a last name. Tell. Tell. <laughs> Anyways, um, he did a special on the OnlyFans murder girl, oh. OnlyFans model who murdered her boyfriend. Oh. Yeah, and it is the most disturbing. Ooh. They have so much footage of them fighting each other in real life. Oh no! It is so f-ed up. I'm like, they need to go to Dateline because I think Dateline does a better job of, of shielding us from like the real gore. Yeah, yeah. They have some class. It's it's like you know when to like go in and when to not. Yeah, yeah. They but that's tell, very TMZ of them. Exactly. Yeah. I just felt. I felt disgusting and oh. I couldn't fall asleep. It is. Don't watch it. It is so <laughs> f-ed up and disgusting. Okay. That's my, that's my bad week. And okay. I barely slept because I kept thinking about this story. Look it up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it is wild. Okay. And this is my good week. It's a quote. You can look at a time you're in as a dark place and you can decide if it's a burial or a planting. <gasps> Planting the seeds, planting the seeds. I love to plant the seeds. Where did you find this quote? It was in a documentary of some kind that I can't remember. So I'm going to get in trouble for not knowing. But isn't it good? Yes. Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. love that. Very Mm -hmm. poignant. Mm -hmm. I'll go next. My good week is Zach posted a picture of when he was 21 years old recently on Instagram. And I need to talk about it because it's insane. Him with hair? Zach with not only hair, but like long flowing mm-hmm. Justin B- oh. hair. <laughs> no. Let me see. This picture of Zach riding on a horse in a it's a photo. Muscle. It's that, a is that photo him? Shop. <laughs> it's his face. Oh my but god, his I never friend, even noticed. His friend. <laughs> oh my god, Jack. It's incredible. You thought that was real. Oh my god, it's a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I Kelty skimmed that because I was like, there's no way that Zach had Jared hair when he was 21. Is that his real hair? No, Zach had like flowy, like I can't Justin. Believe I, can't believe I got scammed. You're literally the person who knows how to Photoshop. I know. Three I, like, of you could have done that. You know what? Now that I look at it, it's not, it's really bad Photoshop. It's a bad, it's, it's, it's like he doesn't even have a chin. I know. <laughs> That's, yeah. So it's a Photoshop, but. And I was like, man. Pecs. The pecs, the pecs on Zach. No, that's a full Photoshop. For oh. those of you on the um, audio medium, it's Zach on a unicorn. It's just his face. I don't know. It looks like Fabio riding a horse yes, or something. Yes. Fabio. No, he is definitely it's, like, it's like in, a, I can't believe it's not butter commercial. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like it's a his soft, favorite picture of a himself. soft core, like romantic novel. Yeah, he loves it. Wait, so did he have hair like this? He had, <laughs> I'll find a picture for or the sake of have, Instagram. Okay. He had like full like helmet hair, like Justin Bieber, like, like frat boy. Yeah. Like a, like a full yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah. God, I can't believe I got duped. You really, sure. wow. wow. He's going to be so happy. That is insane. Yeah. Well, I obviously didn't look at it. That there was a unicorn he was writing. It's fine. I just looked at his hair and I was like, got to talk about it. Yeah. Talk about it. Okay. My bad week is, um, there's a new thing now that is making millennials obviously old oh. like you know there's the things yes. that we do that yeah. like gen Skinny z jeans. doesn't do yeah it's not even that it's Boomerangs. like you, you know that we put all of our uh credit cards on like apple pay on our yeah. phones you yeah. can pay with your phone apparently gen z doesn't use wallets at all so if you're using a wallet as a millennial you look old because there's now some way that you can put your id onto your phone and use that like legitimately well you know what these f- idiots are going to do they're going to get to the airport one day and Mm -hmm. be like oopsies I forgot my ID because I can't shove it up my ass And I don't have a wallet. Have you ever felt dumber than in the Starbucks line or the coffee line when they are, when everyone's just like, voop, voop, voop. And I'm just like, here, let me put my chip in. Like, I get it. I know. I know. But But I also also saw a girl the other day trying to get coffee and her Apple pay didn't work. Yeah. I had to buy her coffee. And I was like, let me take my credit card out for you. this is what like boomers said about us when we stopped getting cash out. They're like, one day the credit card machine isn't going to work. Or when we like made online purchases. Oh yeah. It's like all of your identity is going to be stolen. stolen. Yeah. Oh, wow. I know, but like, I kind of want to figure out this ID thing. It does Gen seem nice. Gen Z, get off my jock. I know. Yeah. Get off my jock. You know what, Gen Z? <laughs> Good luck to you. None of you are going to amount to anything okay okay oh, i don't know about that i don't know about that they're not they're okay. not well speaking yeah, of they look old this is perfect i love this is perfect for my bad week perfect segue okay 
I was in the airport recently. I sat next to a man. It, there were not many seats. I just wanted to env- enjoy my Jersey Mike's LAX experience Gross. in peace. Worst Jersey, Jersey Mike's on planet Earth. No, the one at LAX is bad. It's but so I bad. Last night was so I bad. sat next to this guy and all of a sudden he like pulls out his phone and he's looking at TikTok full volume, no headphones. And I was like, wow, that's really annoying. Yeah. And then he's like, he has his finger and his finger is like swiping, right? Swiping, swiping, swiping. And then he just starts looking around the airport and he's literally not Keeps. even looking at oh TikTok God. anymore. And the, the starting of the, like, blah, 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 man, dude, <laughs> ah, gah, gah, blah, 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 mm-hmm. it's happening. And I was like, if you're going to be annoying on TikTok, at, at least, least be in- looking at TikTok. Yeah. It's really f-ing annoying. That is really f-ing annoying. My good week. Chris was recently in Paris. Ooh. And Sorry. yeah, I know. Petty. <laughs> um, he was in Paris and Paris makes my favorite lip gloss on the planet mm-hmm. and it's only available at the French pharmacy. You know, oh, like people yeah. do the French pharmacy mm-hmm. hall. And I was like, he's like, do you want anything from Paris? And I was like, yeah, Chanel bag, obviously. But same. No. Um, <laughs> I was like, no, but if you see the lip gloss, let me know. He allegedly went on a lip gloss hall with his friend Andreas Pass. And they, um, we have to full name at all times. They went to six different pharmacies in Paris to find my lip gloss. And when he found it, he not only bought me one, he bought the whole store pack. It's Can in- we have one? Yeah. It's, yeah. In, it's in the like cardboard yeah. that sits on the counter. He bought the whole thing. And That's they were, cute. they were like, he's like, do you have any more? And they're like, this is all we have. Like when I'm really stepping it up. He's such you a know nice what? guy, right? Acts he knows, of service. Acts he of service. knows what you like. And yeah. that is important. I will give it, we'll do a taste test. I love it. Well, I'm taste so excited test. when we come back. Our friend Holly Madison is back on Lady Gang. Woo. Yeehaw, baby. The Lady Gang. Our guest today is a cultural icon, one of the (laughs) most recognizable women on the planet, the host of the super popular podcast, Girls Next Level. The author, it's so long, you guys. The author (laughs) of two best-selling books, Down the Rabbit Hole and Vegas Diaries. She was the star of Girls Next Door and her own show, Holly's World. And she's got two, two, not one, two new series on Investigation Discovery, The Playboy Murders and Lethally Blonde. And we're so happy to have her back on the podcast. Please welcome our friend, Holly Madison. Woo-hoo! Thank you. Welcome I'm so back. excited to be here. We were talking about you at breakfast. Oh. You don't age. No. Thank, well, neither do you guys. What are no. you talking about? Mm-hmm. No, Holly. If we, we were just side talking about sides, our aging. You literally look exactly, this is not me just- Thank you. That's exactly the same. I don't know what you're doing, Thank but it's you. working. A lot of Botox. Great. <laughs> The honesty, <laughs> a lot of facials. Yes. Gosh, it's very taut. We were talking about you when we were having breakfast this morning and we were like, damn, Holly's just always crushing. Yeah. Aww. You're just like, <laughs> Come on, you're just you guys, so always you. coming you. up with a new idea that is so you, <laughs> but makes so much sense. That's so original. Mm-hmm. So how did the... An investigation discovery whole conversation happened and then it's so successful I know you're doing another season and then the new show's coming like how did that all come together well it actually wasn't my idea the production company lion tv had this idea to cover like murders that involve people who were involved in the playboy world in some way and my agent brought it to me and I was like I cannot do another playboy thing this was before I was even doing the girls next door rewatch podcast so I was just like, I can't do it. Like, I don't want to do another interview. This is like nightmare fuel for me, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, well, I'm just going to send you the deck of like the cases they want to cover and let me know what you think. And then I got the deck and I was looking at all these cases, like most of them I hadn't even heard of. And I was like, I would watch this show though. Yeah. So I got really excited about it and I did it. Season one was amazing. And we just did season two. And then we have Lethally Blonde, which is a similar show. It's just not Playboy related. It's covering different true crime cases that involve people who are in interesting industries. A lot of them are sex work in some type of way, whether it's like only fans or full service sex work or dancers or just on the fringes of the entertainment industry. So it's all the things I'm fascinated by and I love doing it. Are you allowed to talk about what cases are on that or is it a surprise? Um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say with like the lethally blonde, which cases I'm doing, okay. but they're not super high profile ones. Like they will be surprising. It's yeah. not like any of the cases that you could name off that everybody's like, Oh, I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. So they're super interesting. So cool. You're just such an interesting person because you're like a Disneyland adult and then you're doing like true crime shows. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's definitely like in your world? Two si- <laughs> there's two sides to like my personality and I see like one side is like hot pink and the other side is black. Like, no, does that make sense? You're yes. like that house in Malibu 
Yes. The two houses in Malibu. I'm the the Barbie house, house and, yes. and, the, and the goth house. Yes. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. It's <laughs> so true. It's so crazy. And the shows have been very successful. So, like, you're the girl that just keeps freaking going. Thank you. What does well, that so feel you like? Guys. So well, you, you guys know. We're like the girls that have been stuck in the same basement. Like, the last time you visited us, <laughs> yeah. we're still, we're still here. literally here. <laughs> <doing the laughs> no. Studio. Same vibe. The, same vibe, you know? We're besides the Palisades house in the taco truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Swinging our goods for $7, yes. you yep. know? Absolutely. Um, you had so much success in your career. Do people still treat you like you're dumb? Um, I don't ever really feel like I was treated like I was dumb. I feel like I'm treated like um, I'm a manipulative gold digger. Really? That's what a lot of people try to come at me with. And in my dating history too, like anytime I would start dating a new guy, he would have all these bros come out of nowhere. People who don't even know me or maybe like I've met once, bro, don't date her, bro. Don't date her. Oh my God. And it's just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm at the point where it doesn't bother me anymore because I know it's bullshit, but yeah. yeah. It's just ironic because it's like you're so independently successful you're like I don't need Someone any of else. your shit yeah it's dumb <laughs> it's really well dumb. it's men men are yeah. pretty stupid well. <laughs> <laughs> I know I actually did want to ask you about like the how are the like kids you don't really show them as much now that they're getting yeah. older on social media but like we I mean the internet was obsessed with with rainbow like as a child like there was more photos like of her than <laughs> anything on the internet how are they and like how's motherhood is now like I, I'm assuming like You've like taught, like not, what's the lower than a tween, but like older than a child? A kid. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know there was a lower than a tween, but older than a child. Okay. Well, I think, I feel like Rainbow's starting to get to that tween age. Yeah. And they're, they're very sheltered. They're very protected. I used to post photos of them when they were super young, but by the time they got to be about like preschool age, it just didn't feel right or yeah. safe yeah. anymore. Yeah. I feel like everybody as a parent, they kind of will have that gauge of what they feel is appropriate to share. And for me, I just wanted to completely take them offline and let them decide when, if they ever want to be in the public eye at all in any capacity. So just very private and things are great and I'm blessed. Yeah. <laughs> are either of them like wanting to be on social media? Are they like at that age? 100,000%. And a lot of it is because that's a lot of what's pushed in kids media. Yeah. Uh, the only thing they want to watch is YouTube. You know, we keep it all on the child safe stuff, but they don't even have regular TV shows they watch anymore. They only care about YouTubers. But when they did watch regular TV shows, there was one I didn't like. It was like a cartoon version of Jurassic Park. And oh. like the main character who's really popular is always on her phone. And she's always, you know, she's Weird. getting this many views and this many likes. And my kids are already starting to ask me for a YouTube channel and how many likes. And I'm like, I, I do not want you focused on mm -hmm. likes. Yeah. Like that's not going to yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's it's so pushed weird. on our kids really hard. And I feel like a lot of it comes from, you see this media and it has the vibe of like old people trying to be young. Like these old executives are like, nobody's going to bond with this TV show unless we insert social media into it. And it's yeah. like, no, people are fully capable of like going in and enjoying content and not having it be revolving around social media it's just the whole thing gets muddled. I feel like, oh my God, it's, it's such a tough balance. My, I only have one and he's turning two. Mm -hmm. So he's, we're not even close to that yet, yeah. but I just get panicked when I start thinking about by the time he is a tween, what social media is going to be like. And, and like the phone policies in school, I'm just, I feel like it's only going in a scary direction. And even with posting pictures of him on Instagram, now that he's not a baby and you can kind of make out like what this kid's going to look yeah. like. Yeah. I'm now finding that I'm not posting pictures as much anymore because I don't even have the the type of fans that you have. I can only imagine. Oh, my oh yeah. Oh. There are probably some that are amazing and you are grateful for, but then there are others that are like real creepy and scary. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some fringe people. Like when I first started dating my boyfriend, he had some people that were very into trying to like mess things up for me. And really? it's, it's creepy. Like they will hit up my ex-husband, my kid's dad and try to start problems or would hit up his girlfriend at the time and try to start problems. Just people are nuts. They're nuts. It's and one so thing crazy. I can say to all parents out there, you will never regret not posting your kids. You can always share those pictures later if you yeah. want to. Yeah. You can be like, look at how cute my kid was when he was one or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Yeah. You will never regret not posting your kids. You 
could possibly regret posting them though. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. The things that like you'll see some of these mommy bloggers posting videos. Well, and of then their they're kids. murdering their kids. That's your next show, mommy murderers. <laughs> they're I murdering. Mean, you can take that. It's Holly. a genre. <laughs> it is a genre. <laughs> that's it not is. what I was gonna say. They're but. murdering their influencer <laughs> the mommy children. bloggers are like going to jail because they're starving their children. Oh yeah, yeah we talked about that. this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I was gonna say like like the mommy bloggers that will post like a video of their kid like in the bathtub or doing something, yeah. and the amount of saves and likes on it are so <gasps> insane yeah. oh yeah oh like you can 10 times more than like <gasps> if it's just like a video of just like the mom or something it's creepy ew yeah, yeah. and ew. with the deep fakes and shit i don't know it's just like it's too, too much well that's yeah. the other yeah. thing scary. is now we're like going down a very scary hole, rabbit hole but i guess that's appropriate for you because you're scary and <laughs> cheery <laughs> <laughs> it's disney yeah. and the devil um like, ooh, that's good wow, i like that that's your show, <laughs> is that your show? <laughs> you can have it it's fine um no, I was saying that Holly that will never get into Club 33 again if she does a show <laughs> called The <laughs> Disney <laughs> Murders. <laughs> they're oh, like, they're pull, they're pull her, her and John Stamos yes. will co-host and they'll get cards. But there's so much darkness there's around so much Disney. Darkness. Oh my God. <laughs> no, like the deep fake. So apparently people are posting videos of their kids just very innocently. Like, this is my kid on the first day of school, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. And they're making deep fakes of their children and they're making it so that their children look like they're kidnapped in another location and they'll send it to the parents Ugh. and this parents will believe that their child's being kidnapped because they'll have these videos of yeah. their child and then they'll send money and like this whole thing oh, Zach it's just scam. my yeah. husband literally just said to me you're done like mm-hmm. we're done now mm-hmm. he now that he's talking and now that he's going to school mm-hmm. and he's not under our supervision all the time like this is what how sick people are and so now I'm going to be like one of those crazy people that live off the grid and no you need like a safe word that's like that what is, people are doing. That's they have another thing. Yeah, that's do you a good do idea. That? So that's my my friend's daughter. If anybody picks her up from anywhere, they have to know the family safe word. Yeah. Like oh, no matter mango what. or whatever. Yeah. Mango. Yeah. I don't know. It sounded oh. like a safe word. Okay. Yeah. I All like right. it. <laughs> right? Um, mm-hmm. It's a good one. Won't be mine, but. <laughs> I love this. Good luck to you guys. I'll be over with Callie. If anyone takes Callie, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you can have her. You can have her. You've been offering her to the coyotes daily. <laughs> She's pretty annoying. They won't take her. No. They don't even want her. Um. Holly, when I was uh, studying up on these new these new projects of your ID, actually posted this really cool like little mini interview with you, and it was like th- three things you're like into or not into for 2024, or whatever. And the first one you said was, "I will no longer make fear based decisions." Ooh. And I was like, oh, "What does that mean to you?" Well, I feel like anytime I look back on like dumb decisions I've made, it's been because I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to pay my rent next month, or I'm afraid somebody's gonna get me in trouble or something like that. And that's just something I realized with hindsight. And I try to take myself out of that and try to like take a pause and a breath before I make any kind of decision and think, where's this coming from? Is this coming from a place of like, I'm attracted to this thing authentically, or am I just afraid or, you know? Yeah. It's just a pattern I've noticed with me that when I make decisions, I'm not really excited about after the fact, it usually came from a place of, well, if I don't do it, they're going to have this person come on and this person's going to talk shit. And, and that's a no, <laughs> that's a no. Do you have regrets as far as like, you've had a really long successful career. Do you have any regrets as far as making d- those types of decisions? I'm. Um, it's hard to have regrets because I feel like I'm pretty good at making lemonade out of lemons yeah. and I like where I'm at right now, but I've done a lot of shit I would not do again if I was like put back in yeah. that position. Like people always ask like, oh, would you change anything? And I don't really know what people mean by that. I don't mean if I could just go back and like change it, but I'm still here now. Or do I have to go back and like relive and redo? Sliding doors. if it was relive and redo, uh-uh, I would find yeah. another way, do something else, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, not well, I think twice. it's a good thing too because you know we see it a lot like in our community of our our women saying like what I I have to do this because I should do it Mm -hmm. you know what I mean the like oh I Mm -hmm. should because I I should want to be with my in-laws on this holiday or I should stay at my job because it's the law even though they're abuse abusive or I should blah 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 and it's like well I guess the fear based decisions really like hit me. And I was like, Oh, like what am I doing in my life? That is because I'm scared that honestly, I really related to what you just said. Like if it's not, if I say no, they're going to get this other person and then I'm going to see them doing it on Instagram. And I'm not that I'm not getting that many offers. Let's be real. (laughs) But then I'm going to see them doing on Instagram or like, if we don't do the the thing for lady gang, like someone else, some other podcast is going to do it. And we're going to be like, ah, you know, but it's like, really like, should you do it? Does it make sense? Is it the best use of your time? Well, yeah. even like talking about the playboy, mer- 
Playboy Murders show when you were like, I'd watch this. Like, yes. but that's a good thing that, that you took. Good. That probably yeah. wasn't fear based because you're like, I actually really, really want to do this. But like, yeah. cause you knew if you're watching it, you'd be like, oh, I wish that I did. Mm-hmm. So yeah. totally. I love that. Oh, I love it so much. Um, all right. I want to take you back to our time together in Las Vegas. Hot, <laughs> yes. Hottie, hottie peep show. What year was this? <laughs> yeah. 2009. I had a mullet. Wow. 2009? 2009? You're right. It was 2000. And okay, you were so in 15 it 15 years, years ago. ago. 15? Isn't that well, crazy? Well, this wow. is so... And you look exactly the That's same. That's what I'm saying. That is cr- <laughs> She's been like, her hair's You've longer. been like embalmed. <laughs> you really have been embalmed. Um, what I was, I was thinking about you coming on and I was so excited to see you. And then I had seen, you know, in the media and on the podcast that you'd come out saying that you had found out that you have this level of autism. Which is why I don't want to wear the headphones, I think. Because yeah. if I had the headphones, that would throw me off just enough that I can't have a conversation. It's yeah. just like a weird sensory thing. Yeah. So yeah. Interesting. And being able to like have a quote unquote normal conversation is kind of something I had to learn along the way. And I'm comfortable with it now. Like I feel yeah. great right now. But if I had the headphones on, yeah. I'd be like throw you off. It's yeah. really interesting. And then also like these girls have been like, can we get new mics for like three months? So I'm like, it's time. <laughs> this, is, this needed to happen. Yeah, this needed she, to happen. They really needed this. I'm like, wow, poor Holly. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Um, but I, first of all, I, I wanted to just say like knowing you back then, I remember being very drawn to you. Obviously you were the star of the show. You know, you were Holly, you had your e-show, like you were a very famous person, but I really loved your personality because you were like this incredibly, obviously like sex symbol, gorgeous, gorgeous girl. You were so talented in the show. You could sing, you could dance, like you really crushed it. I mean, that's kind of a stretch. I don't know if I can sing and dance. You're very kind. (laughs) You can sing. (laughs) (laughs) She she just laughs. You got, you got the dance eventually yeah, I think that's that, what you struggled with the most minute. you helped me with it though remember yeah, yeah. you're welcome you I'm a nice you. person well Kelsey yeah. can't sing if it makes you yeah. feel any no, she sure. tries so. I tried <laughs> um but I, but I remember like wanting and this is I mean I was at a bad point in my life but I remember wanting to be your friend so badly like I was like she's because you were so outwardly successful like everyone loved you and you were the sparkly person but then when we were like behind the scenes like having dinner or you were like what are you doing this week and you were like I'm reading a book on blah, 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 or like I'm watching like you were just this very like nerdy shell and I, I really felt like that's how I existed in the world mm-hmm. and so I was really drawn to you but I have to be honest it was it was hard at times because I did feel like there was this like in permeable wall that like you just couldn't ever get past. And I was like, Oh, well she's really guarded because she's been through the ringer. Mm -hmm. But do you think that was like your, some of this autism and this personal stuff? Or do you think that that was just you being so guarded because it was such a crazy time in your life? I think both. I think I was definitely guarded. And I think just living at the mansion for seven years, you always had to be on your guard Mm -hmm. and just to have this really hard outward shell, but definitely like being on the spectrum, it makes it harder for me to have like a quote unquote normal interaction with people. And I zone out a lot. That's another thing too, is I will get lost in some crazy thought. Like my mom said, I had been doing that since I was a toddler and everybody would be like, what's wrong with your kid? And she's like, she's just thinking right now, you know? So, so I get lost in my head a lot. And there is, you know, there is kind of a wall and, you know, Bridget and I have been going back on my podcast and talking about like our time at the mansion and everything. And just talking about the different people we interacted with over the years, which were hundreds and hundreds of women who came through there to shoot for playmate and whatever. And I can think of like two girls that I was trying to get to know at the time who were really hard to get to know nice people. I like them, but so hard to get to know. And me over here being like armchair psychiatrist. I'm like, I bet those two girls are on the spectrum too, because it's like knowing as somebody who, you know, once I got comfortable at the house and started being like welcoming to everybody and trying to get to know those two women, it was really hard. Yeah. It's an interesting, like, it was such an, I mean, you're the most lovely, you know, and, and you have lots of great friends. And so, but it was always like when, the, when you came out being like, oh, I, I am autistic. I was like, oh, this, like, I don't know. I can just, it just made perfect sense for me. I don't know yeah, why. I know you like, How did you know to, did you go looking for a diagnosis? Did you just feel like something was question marks your whole life? 
You know, I just always wrote it off as me being really introverted and having been through a lot in my 20s and growing up in Alaska when I was in elementary school, we lived way out in the middle of nowhere. So I always kind of blamed it on that. I'm like, I just wasn't socialized, but that doesn't make sense because I have a sister who's two years younger than me and she's perfectly well adjusted in every way. Mm -hmm. But still, I was always like, well, I just grew up in the woods. I don't know how to interact (laughs) with people, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, my mom told me and my ex-husband not too long ago, maybe only five years ago, that she always thought I was on the spectrum and there that there was something going on. And then I looked up all the symptoms and I was like, I display a lot of this. And this was maybe around like 2018. And it took forever for me to find the right doctor. Mm -hmm. I kept searching. I kept asking for referrals. Nobody had a good referral for me. And then I don't know what it was because I was doing the same Google keyword searches over the years, but finally somebody popped up within the last year and I went to her and we did over the course of like seven different appointments, Whoa. she diagnosed me. She also took an appointment with my mom. She took an appointment with my ex-husband because they want to see how other people perceive you mm. and their interactions with you. Oh, so interesting. it feels good to finally get the diagnosis. I feel like I can finally talk about it. And what are the symptoms that like you notice when you were doing these like initial quizzes, probably online when you're like, yeah, you know, like what were those? Because I know that the traits of autism are different in women than men. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times like women get diagnosed like way later in life. So yeah. like, what was that for you? and finding that out for me a lot of things and I just want to say before that they call it a spectrum for the reason for a reason there's people who deal with it on so many different levels there's people who have an easier time functioning you know in the real world and there's people who have a much harder time so I just want to address that first but for me it was a lot of like hyper fixating on things not picking up on social cues not being able to engage with people as much not making eye contact like I make eye contact now (laughs) and it was one of those things where you always hear you know to be successful you're supposed to like make eye contact and do a firm handshake and all those things and I knew that but I was never doing it until like recently And you have great eye contact now. Thanks. I I applied it. (laughs) (laughs) And so what changed? Like once you got that diagnosis, like how do you, how did you change your life? Like, do you, are you like, okay, just having the awareness or is it? Yeah. I feel like the awareness helps a lot and Mm -hmm. just being able to speak about it and tell people that I actually am diagnosed. I feel like people are more apt to listen and just, I'm easier on myself now. Like when you don't really know what it is or where it comes from, it feels funny. It feels weird. It feels like, uh, what's wrong with me? Am I just an asshole? Like, I don't know. Uh." But now that I know exactly what it is, I can focus on it. I can fix the things that aren't working for me or at least try to. And I'm just like a lot more forgiving with myself. And I can also tell other people what's going on. So if Mm -hmm. they're not getting the right social interaction, they know what it is and they know that it's not them or not me being an asshole or something. Oh, I love it. It must make social situations and business stuff less like having less anxiety around it too. A hundred percent. And just knowing that you can get overstimulated and you need a lot of time to recharge and you don't necessarily love being around huge groups of people a lot. Just giving yourself permission to back away from that a little bit. It's such a relief. Yeah. Right. You're like, I have the freedom now to just be the way I am, Mm -hmm. but like, don't come for me. Don't be like, (laughs) you're an antisocial person who doesn't know how to like, you know, you're like, no, no, this is like real. It's totally. a real thing. Yeah. Oh, I love that. All right. When we come back, we need to talk about the podcast. All right. Girls Next Level podcast literally hit the top of the charts. I was so excited for you guys. You. Like, welcome so to good. the podcast game. <laughs> you have massive fans. I love that you're always just like kikiing in a sweatsuit. Ooh, it's yes. like <laughs> you, the cutest people. Has it surprised you, the success? Absolutely. I mean, I, I knew there would be a fan base for it. Cause I was already doing like these YouTube reactions, but I didn't think it would be what it is. So I'm so grateful. It like found its little niche and that we can share our stories with everybody. And, you know, we get so much feedback from fans. I'm sure you guys get this too, where podcasts make people feel less alone. Like yeah. I get so many messages from like new mothers who are at home with their kids all day. And they're like, listening to you guys talk, it makes me feel like I have friends and I'm not alone. Or this gives me something to do on my commute to work. And that's such a good feeling because yeah, I'm yeah. a huge podcast listener myself too. And I love, I love that. What's been the biggest challenge? Well, I do all the production and the editing and that was a learning process. It is crazy that you do that. Damn. (laughs) But it's just like, I can't really trust our story with anybody else. And, you know, I've been through it to like writing the memoirs and dealing with, you know, legal at publishing houses. I kind of know what we can say and what we can't say and what's responsible to say and what's not. So I, 
And I, I feel like I'd be doing just as much work handing it over to somebody else and then re-listening the whole hour and being like, you need to go back to this time, yeah, this time. Yeah. It's like, I might as well just do it. So um, it was like a whole year of like learning. And even our video like quality is lame. It's just one camera. It's just like, I'm so slow to like catch on to all that, but. It doesn't seem to like matter though. No, because it it's like matter. your views are insane. Your downloads are probably crazy. And yeah. it's like, what I love about it is it's, it's like the Disney and the devil thing. It's where you, we watched it all mm -hmm. when we were younger and yeah. it was like part of like the millennial experience mm -hmm. and then getting this inside look where there's like all this darkness, yeah. I think, especially obviously like with true crime and stuff like that. Everybody's just so interested. Cause I know that a lot of people were like, there has to be something that's going on yeah, totally. and to like get all the details for that, I think is it's like ravenous for people. Have you received any backlash from like the, that camp? <laughs> Always. Oh, yeah. You're like, when have I not? Every yeah. day is a cease and desist. No, you know, know, even before I wrote my book eight years ago, people would get cranky with me for the littlest things because that crew of people, I call them the playboy loyalists. Mm -hmm. They're so hardcore for someone who was a human being, but they act like he's Jesus Christ yeah. and can't yeah. write a flaw. So even back, you know, in the days of when I was at peep show in Vegas, you know, Twitter was huge. And yeah. I remember somebody wrote to me like, don't you miss the mansion? I'm so sad you didn't get married. And I was living an amazing life in Vegas. And it would kind of get old and frustrating when people are always like shipping you with your ex. Yeah. And you're like, no, I'm actually better off now. So I wrote a response. I was like, I'm actually happier. I'm happier now with like a little smiley emoticon, yeah. you know, you know, signaling yeah. it's not that deep, but one of his sons unfollowed me after I did that. And then oh, one God. of his friends Ew. wrote back to me, well, I'm sure you had some good times there. It's just, everybody was snotty over yeah. something as little as that. And I'm just like, I can't even deal right now. Yeah. So they're always like that. Like I could say something really mild and they'd be pissed. I could write a whole book and they'll be pissed. Yeah. I could talk about the show and they'll be pissed. Yeah. Like I don't care. But it well, was your life and you were the stars. And I think what's yeah. really interesting about the podcast is realizing how, um, how not in control, mm -hmm. like, do you know what I mean? It was the three of you. Like it was, this yeah. was not a show about really, it was the three of you yeah. and the mansion, you know? And so I like that you're kind of like reclaiming your power and coming Thank back you. and like having those conversations. The episode that I am very interested in about the podcast was the um, layout. When you guys did the layout, like the layout of the actual house and like how it all worked because oh, yeah. Um, yeah. like I just, that house is so gross. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it smells. It's so gross. I went to a party there and I was like, I'm finally going mm -hmm. to the mansion. Like this is it. This is iconic. And we pulled up and we walked into this crusty ass house and I was like, this is it. And that grotto is the nastiest thing I've ever seen. What year did you go? Like pro probably seven years ago. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. It was That's not so decrepit. Long ago. Like it was so, it like no one had taken, it, it just felt like a, the haunted mansion at Disney. Speaking of Disney. Yeah, it was kind of sad. And I'm not anti things looking retro. Like there would be this room in the game house and it was called the van room. So it looked like the back of somebody's van, but it was kind of like fun and campy. But like the cushions on the sides were like, it looked like somebody sliced through it with a knife. And oh, I like, I remember yeah. going down to the Pacific Design Center and like finding that fabric and like, can you replace this? Like they, they just weren't really like for you know, being this host house and like the representative of a brand, like, come on. Right. Yeah. It's like when you go in, not to Disney it, but when you go in Walt <laughs> Disney's apartment uh -huh. um, at Disneyland, it's like, it's old as f Mm -hmm. but like it's pristine. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's exactly. like a collector's edition. It's like the fabric, the chairs, everything's old, but it's like, it's been so properly preserved, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, which is like kind of a miss. Probably that a lot of been the vibe. What's that? Probably a lot of carpet. There was so much carpet. I remember I lobbied for so long to have this nasty ass carpet taken off the Great Hall stairs because yeah. it was like this yellow shag carpet that dogs had pissed and shit all oh. over. It was so gross. I'll even see like people post pictures from back in the day and I'm like, it looks like there's diarrhea dripping off the stairs. Oh my God. And I was finally able to get it clean taken out and there was the same carpet upstairs in the hallway. I was finally able to get that taken out and just hardwood floors done. And that happened around like season two of the show. And Bridget and I are watching the show and I'm like, Bridget, the sense of relief I get when I see the hallway with the hardwood floors, even today, yeah. I'm like, Wait, I think I have a picture of the fresh air. Or is it these, these stairs? 
Yeah, this was, I mean, this was probably the carpet was old by the time you got there. I can tell by the picture, but but that was like the quote unquote new carpet that Let I had put it. in. Cause it was before that it was like wall to wall oh, shag yeah. gold seventies. Yeah. Like Playboy Mansion just screams carpet to me. Carpet. Yeah. Yeah. Carpet. Yeah. Nasty carpet. So oh, nasty. Oh, Becca's giving us head It's shot. a slideshow. No, like there's like the oh. animals in the backyard. Well, that's yeah. my next question. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. And I don't want, I know you. Oh, but you all, I also cut you off when we were talking about how the mansion operates. Like, yeah. no, I just thought it was really interesting because like it, it was like where people would be when and mm-hmm. how you could separate and like lit I don't know I just think it's very I think it's cool I think it's really it was a really good way to explain your life um my next question is just the animals yeah <laughs> I have a lot of concern about the animals like <laughs> which ones where are they now oh well um Kelly, the, come here. the guy who bought the house got the zoo license that goes along with the house so okay. he still has the animals I've heard Zoo yeah. license. I know. I would. I would love to see. I mean, Who there were some it? animals. This guy named Darren Metropolis. He buys Metropolis. brands. And fl- I know he sounds like a superhero, yes. supervillain, or something. But um, well, he buys. Darren he Metropolis. made that last name. He made that himself. Himself. Yeah. Yeah. He buys brands and flips them. Like oh. if a like Hostess when they were bankrupt, like he bought them and like sold them. Yeah. So, so is he the rebranding cupcake. the mansion or he's just wants to live there? No, I think he just wants to live there. I think he's doing like a whole renovation oh, and wow. stuff. And Weird. But where are the animals? I think they're, they're still there. I he mean, it's probably not the same animals as when I was there. Cause that was so long ago. I'm sure so many of them have Some passed. Some of them have but... died. Kelty, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <to tell you. laughs> like, but you were connected with them. A hundred percent. And there's... on the show, it looked like you're no, connected No, a hundred percent. I was. And they're like, I'm sure the monkeys I knew and stuff are not there anymore, but there were so many like macaws and things that live for 80 years like I would love to go back and see those animals I was so attached to them there was this bird a Malukan cockatoo who I swear could read my mind like the bird did the funniest thing I was so connected to this bird so I was outside one day and I saw this playmate coming across the lawn and she was one of the ones I wasn't my favorite person like I knew she was just gonna like she was always like on Ambien and she's going to tell me Whoa. about her divorce. And she was just kind of a downer energy. So I was like thinking like to myself. during the day? Oh God, yeah. And she's oh. coming across and it's just, you know, when somebody comes toward you and you don't necessarily like dislike this person, but okay. it's just downer energy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking like, oh God. So she comes over, starts talking. The bird jumps off my arm and bites her toe. And the bird's never done this to anybody before. So I'm like gathering, but like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, so sorry. Yeah. And then she starts talking again and my energy goes down. The bird gets down and bites her toe again. <gasps> again, I'm so weirded out because I've never seen the bird do this. So I grab the bird and she gets pissed and she walks away. And the bird could do like the imitation of a human laugh. And I shit you not, the moment, the timing on this was so perfect. The moment the girl gets out of earshot, the bird looks at me and goes, <laughs> like, I swear the bird got rid of that girl. For me. My God, it was so weird. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Wait, we I'm need a po- a macaw. You must find Wait, the bird. What was they his live name? in Kerala. Kerala, yeah, the bird. Girl. What's his? What's the guy's name that owns it? Darren uh, Metropolis. Metropolis. <laughs> Metropolis. I bet you, Mr. Listening. Metropolis, would let you go over there and like check out the backyard again. Yeah, you really should. <laughs> you should. No, you yeah. should. You should go and see if your macaws there. I How long do they live? Some of them live like 80 years oh, and there was still this be beautiful kicking. hyacinth macaw I got for half for his birthday one year. And those live for 80 years. So I know that bird is yeah. still there. Oh my Whoa. God. I love this. Mm. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's such a good story. And it definitely is real. <laughs> um, and I guess my last question, and honestly, you don't have to answer this all if you don't want to, but I have saw Krista, Crystal's doing her book uh-huh. right now. And she's come out being like, I just was never really happy there. I, I just had this feeling of like, do you think anyone like really loved that man? Like, do you think anyone was there in relationships with him being like, this is the love of my life? Or do you think it was just all situational or you felt like you needed to be there at that time and that was enough? I mean, I think there were a good handful of people who did. I mean, I loved him, although it was very like Stockholm syndrome heavy and it was a very, very toxic relationship that I would not recommend to anybody, but I definitely loved him. I think Sandra, his girlfriend from the seventies loved him. I think Barbie, his girl, I think he always kind of had somebody up to a point. Did, will you read the book? Oh yeah, I read it. Oh. Are you saving your, are you doing a reaction on your podcast to it? I mean, I will. I just, I mean, this, this is a hot take because as a woman, like I can't have any criticism because it always has to be like women supporting women. Yeah. Well, and and people came after you so hard for your book too. A hundred percent. Um, anybody who's read my book that came out eight years ago and then read her book, tell me the narrative voice doesn't sound exactly the same. Oh yeah. Mm. 
drives me up a wall. Mm. And I'm not saying, when I say narrative voice, I don't mean, of course, we're going to be writing about a lot of the same yeah. things. Like yeah. we dated the same person. We might even come to some of the same conclusions. But when I, like, I was reading it and there were sometimes I was like, I feel like I'm reading my own book. This yeah. is creepy. Like she weaves fairy tale references in and out, just like I did. And uses a lot of the same, you know, psychological, you know, catchphrases and things like that. And I'm like, like, if you take my book and Kendra's book, it's two completely different people, even though we lived there at the same time, yeah. like it's two completely different voices as yeah. it should be. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm weirded out by it, especially mm -hmm. since she had a ghostwriter, like do your research and don't copy. Oh, don't. she did have a ghostwriter. Yes. Yeah. So and so I ghostwriter was, read your listen, book and was we, like, we've written book. two books. We know what happened. They went in a conference room. And someone was like, you know, it was great. Holly's book was great. You should, we want a book like that, but your stories. And then someone went and did that. Like, yeah. and that yeah. bothers me. I, and, I'm know, not, and I'm not supportive of her telling her story. Yeah. I think we probably went through a lot of the same things right. in that relationship. And a lot of it's been very relieving for me to hear, even before her book came out, when she talks about feeling like she always felt like she had to walk on eggshells yeah. or always felt like she was going to have the rug pulled out from her yeah. under any moment. That yeah. was so relieving for me to hear. Cause I'm like, I was the only one who said that for the longest yeah. time, you yeah. know? But when I read, something and like the narrative voice is the same it bothers me especially since you know it was it's always kind of hard to come out and tell your story at first especially when you're crucified for it because yeah. when my book came out he was still alive it was before the me too movement went mainstream you know I got you were dragged. crushed yeah. the book was very successful but I got dragged yeah now it's a little bit easier for people to come out and tell mm -hmm. their stories and to just have the same narrative voice in the book mm -hmm. and you know there's people on, on that publishing team that worked at the public, my publishing house promoting my book when it came out. And it just does, it doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. yeah. You would have thought that it went through somebody reading it. That would be like, that's a little bit too similar. Yeah. Like, why don't, why don't we do our own thing a little yeah. bit? No, we and get it bothers me. And I know that's a hot take. I know people are going to be mad and say, you're just being conceited, Holly, shut up. Women supporting women, but it bothers me. And I'd be lying if I said it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think like, I mean, on a different level, uh, no one's copying our books. <laughs> um, but like, there's been times We're buying them. <laughs> That's not true. Less people buy our books. Um, but, but I remember when we first started our podcast mm -hmm. and then there was like a, a time we were really excited and had done it. And then there was a time where television shows and other podcasts, they would like literally like go on tour and they would have the same exact set for their meet and oh, greet or the yeah. same exact wallpaper on their background. Or like there was a, a TV show that like literally ripped off our entire, all of our ideas. And it's like, you know, it does give you the ick because yeah. you're like, you know, I worked so hard for this and like the blood, sweat and tears that you have to go through when you're creating a space for the first time is, you know, like we did two and a half years without paying ourselves at all, mm -hmm. like doing the yeah. work because there were no female brands to have on podcasts. Mm -hmm. There was no advertising money for females. So it was like, you're kind of like, well, wait a second. And it's like, you're still so happy for everyone. And you're like, go us, go yeah. women. We're all making shows. Yay. Let's do it. But there is that. I totally like, I think well, we can relate to that. Yeah. Especially it being your personal story. Yeah. Of like yeah. Sensitive yeah. content. For and sure. yeah. you know, you kind of like you walked so these people could run. Yeah. And yeah. I think That's it exactly would have been thinking. more respectful to give your book the space the flowers yeah, yeah. um okay <laughs> last thing i want to i want to end on a really positive note so i want to take it back to me i want <laughs> you to tell i want you to tell the girls if you could describe like 2009 kelty <laughs> mullet heartbroken over our mutual ex-boyfriend you know, so, so sad, Kelty, in three words, what would words would you chose? Oh Desperate. my God. Oh, her. Energetic, <laughs> enthusiastic, full of life is three words, but you were just such a go-getter. I mean, everybody talks about it. Like everybody who knows you in the show talks By about the it. Like way, we can't I texted, believe like I what you're doing. Josh. You're hosting the Thanksgiving day parade. Like that's so iconic. <laughs> like you are the manifester of manifestors. Yeah, I shit you not. She is, she like is. it's so inspiring, honestly. Oh, sorry. I have a selfish, selfish question. My son's birthday is on Friday and we're taking him to Disney world mm -hmm. for the first time. Yeah, is cute. two years old. Is, is this a touch and go age to go to Disney world? You know, it's as the professional. It's good. Oh I no, mean, that doesn't sound oh, good. No. I would just say pace yourself. Okay. 
pace yourself. Like it doesn't have to be, I mean, the good news is he's so young. It doesn't have to be like the perfect trip. Whereas if your kid was four, yeah. it's a little more pressure. Like you have to get like the, all the rides. If it's a girl, the makeover, all the yes. anybody yeah. wants a makeover, get the makeover and stuff like that. I would just say pace yourself, take it slow. Don't feel like you have to do every ride. Yeah. Stop for a snack. Okay. Have just you like, ever seen an adult do the bippity boo bouquet? The you're not allowed. They salon. only let you do it until you're 12. Wait, no. what is it? Yeah. They oh my God. literally I'm... make you into a Disney princess of your choice. They and have the, the dresses TikToks are so The amazing. tiaras, the whole makeup, the updo. My niece did Nails. it and she lost her shit. And then they walk through the park all day dressed as that princess. Aww. And they do like a turnaround. And like, but the, the, I saw a girl that chose the color. You can have a, sorry, this is like deep on my TikTok, but you can get the colored fall, like the colored yeah. fake hair that's like pink and blue. Yeah. And then she also got the ring of flowers and then she also the, the tiara, tiara. So oh like, that would have been me this was woman <laughs> was literally just shoving more shit and it and probably cost five hundred dollars well, i was gonna say that sounds <laughs> so expensive they shellacked my niece's hair like she was about to be in a an ice skating bun. competition yeah. <laughs> and then like <laughs> Wait. glitter paint and my sister's like oh, we're so fucked she had she that hairdo like? she had that hairdo for like five days no, you need to like crack it off your head. Once it was it's done. So horrible. I cry every oh time God. my daughter does that. Does like, she love it? Sob. She yeah. must love it. Wait, she that's does. so cute. It's the cutest. Oh I remember the first time she did it, she was like two and I just like was oh. sobbing. <laughs> should I bring, should I bring Ford and make him a prince? Can't they, they do, make they, they, they do, do, right? do a prince one. They'll do give you like a charming. shield and like do like a slick back hair and <gasps> glitter. But you have it's to. It's probably already booked. It's so hard to get in. Really? You know what they, they have on the cruise ships? Any... They have pirate ones. They'll make you into a pirate Stop. and they do like bruises and cuts on your face. <gasps> it's so cool. It's so I want to do it. Wait, you have to be under 12. Yeah. yeah. God damn it. I'll be pretty bop you. No, thank you. <laughs> I could be pretty bop you right now. I have all those supplies and you know I do. So true. <laughs> all right. Guys, Holly, thank you for being thank here. You. You're thank lovely. you. We love you. You're one of our thank first you. guests on Lady yes. Gang and helped make the show And you were success. pregnant. We were just talking about this before yeah. we started recording. You were pregnant. <gasps> Whoa. Is that wild? And you have seven and ten now? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. How time go. flies. And we're still here. You guys check out. <laughs> Tell <laughs> us where people can watch um, the Playboy Murders. The Playboy Murders is on Monday nights at 10, 9 central on ID. And then after that, it streams on Max, Discovery Plus, and I think even Hulu. Great. Yeah. That's what I thought. Woo. And then Lethally Blonde is not out until March. Yeah. Oh, we're so proud busy of you. Busy and so working. So proud of you. Booked, busy, bippity, boppity, boo. And we will <laughs> see, see you next Tuesday. Tuesday.